everyone, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. In this video, I want to talk about something that is a little bit difficult to fully explain. And it's, it's a little bit difficult to teach because it's the idea of playing with a band, right? Not just sort of randomly soloing over top of stuff, but really listening to what's going on with the band behind you and trying to not only, you know, have some call and response and, and some back and forth, but to, you know, change what you do and 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 alter your lines and, and sort of work your licks and stuff to complement what the band does, just as the band tries to complement and, and help out with what you do, right? It should be a conversation. <laughs> it shouldn't be, you know, one person shouting and the other people not listening, right? It's it's It should be sort of a back and forth and a give and take. And when it is, it sounds awesome and it's a lot of fun, but you really do have to sort of think about it. You know, you have to be aware of it and you have to pay attention to it. So I'm gonna try to sort of give you some ideas. And, and I think a great uh, example of this, uh, you probably noticed on the way in, I used a track very similar to something like Hoochie Coochie Man, which is, uh, you know, obviously a blues standard and shows up at a lot of jams. And it has a nice, really obvious call. <laughs> right, or there's a lot of ways to play that. And I have other videos with, with how you want to play that riff and how the band might play that riff. And they're all valid. They act as sort of a call. And what we want to do, of course, is respond to that. And so what I tend to do, and I'm, I want to keep this simple. So I'm thinking of nothing more being, and my track is in the key of G. So I'm thinking of nothing more than sort of this, you know, you can call it box one. You know, I think about that and and I play sort of not in the basement because as you may have heard me say before the thing about playing down in the basement is that it, it's easy to get lost it's easy for your notes to kind of get overpowered by the band because you're you're really down in the low region so uh, you may have heard me say that before you know stay out of the basement once in a while it's fine but you know usually you'll find I don't go down below the fifth string much so I'm gonna play sort of in that, you know, third and fourth strings. So you'll notice that as the band plays, I'm gonna kind of, um, as, it, as it goes by, I'm basically gonna sort of call out, you know, what I'm thinking and, and what, I'm, what I'm imagining. And what I want you to watch for uh, is a few different things, and then ideally sort of try this for yourself. And it doesn't have to be this exact jam track, probably just about any jam track would do. Uh, any sort of a slow blues type of thing is going to have a, a build from the one to the four chord, okay? And it's going to have another, you know, something build of some sort going to the five chord. So those chord changes are where things are going to happen. So you'll notice that I'll play down low. And then, even you know, later on, and I'll play there a couple of times. But then I, I, I don't want to play there all day, so I might... You'll see I kind of get up to the second string notes. And then I might even play some first string notes. But you'll notice that when it comes time to go to the four chord, I really want to make a statement. And the band at that point is going to come in and they're going to build. You know, the drums are going to hit and everything's going to, going to build, right? So I want something that has that drama and, and that has that, that huge you know, building potential. And one of the best things for that is something like a double stop, right? So um, I'm sort of grabbing that double stop where the first and second boxes meet. In this case, it's the um, seventh fret on the third string, sixth fret on the second string. That's a great way to build some drama. Um, I, could, I can bar. Right, I could I could grab those two notes on the top string. Um, I can do there's a kind of a cool shake where I grab the third fret or sorry the the pinky note in box one. Um, it's the sixth fret and the fifth fret on the string below it. And I realize that doesn't it's not in the in the scale. 
but it does work. And it'll, and it'll kind of lead you in. And there's a lot of different ways that you can sort of lead into that four chord. And I happen to think that, you know, double stops are just a really, really great way to build that intensity and give you something that really sings and, and, and just brings it. And then once that's done, you know, and we've worked up to the four chord, I got to get out of where I was before. Okay, so I've been playing down here. So I got to bring it up. And I, I like to think of what I call the big bend, right? So I'm going to take something like the top note of, you can call it the four note solo box or box two or the house pattern, whatever. It's, it's the same group of notes. And that's really not a difficult lick, you know? It's just sticking that bend and holding it. And if you need a, you know, sometimes adding that vibrato is really hard to do for a lot of people. Um, just practice hitting it and getting it right to pitch and relaxing just a little bit and getting back to the pitch. And that's a good way you can practice that. But the main thing is just that you're, you know, you're getting something big because we've been playing things that are small, for lack of a better word. So we, we just need something that's big and a big bend like that, usually with a face. It helps if you don't make the face, it, it doesn't work as well. But if you make the face and you play a big bend, it really does, you know, sort of just open that solo up. And it could be quarter notes. That's all it is, you know. One and a two and a three and four. It doesn't have to be super fancy or, or fast or anything of the sort. What we're looking for is changes, right? The difference from small. And by the way, your volume knob on your guitar can be a big help, right? If I'm if I'm wanting to keep it small, but the 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 volume's up full blast, then I, I might get a little bit more than I intended to. Just a little bit of a nudge off can really really help a lot. And just pick lightly, and maybe sometimes like just to you know, add a little bit of, you know, you know, maybe pluck it with your finger. And that can give you that kind of cool, you know, different, different vibe, just anything different, anything to, to mix it up so that you're not just playing in that same region all the time uh, and you're not playing the exact same notes as far as rhythmic, you know, you're not just playing straight eighth notes all the time or triplet eighth notes as the case may be, but you're, you're playing quarter notes or maybe you're playing, you know, quarter note triplets. Right, even just grab a note and just, and just shake it. That, that has a huge impact. Okay, so there's a lot of things like that that you can do. Um, and I've probably got other videos even with, with more ideas than that. But what I, what I want to do now is I'm going to play along with my backing track again and kind of, you know, call out what I'm doing uh, as I go. This was, this was something that came up, by the way, on, on the Blues Guitar Unleashed member forum. So uh, if, you, if you're kind of wondering where I got this whole thing, it's, it's something we've been talking about lately. So um, you may want to go check that out uh, and, and see that for yourself if, if you have access to that forum. Uh, but in, in, even if you don't, this is, this is super useful to you because you can, you know, this is, this is an idea that, that you can use in any style of music. You know, if I was playing a shuffle, right, I can still... Right, so as I can still move around sort of between the two regions and, and shake things up and I can still do all of this kind of stuff, it's just going to happen later in the form. I might let the entire form go by one time if it's a shuffle. I might play the entire form through in, in the low region. So 
here's the second time. Right? And so I don't, again, I'm, I'm making that later on. You can, you can do that sort of stuff later. You know, you don't have to do it all right at the beginning, but you do have to change things up. So if it's a shuffle, you might wait a little bit longer. In the case of a slow blues like what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do it a little bit sooner than later. Okay, so let's, uh, let's check it out. Let me hit play and let's, uh, let me, let me, I'll kind of t tell you about what I'm doing as I do it. All right, so here it's going to come around to the top. Here's the beginning of the form. So I back off on the volume. So notice that I let the I let the call happen before I talk back. Now I'm hitting some higher notes, but not a lot. Open it up. So there was that big bend. Now I can work my way back down. At the climax. And now I can take a little break. And if I'm going to go around again, I can keep it pretty mellow. It's going to build. So there you can see, you know, I, I'm just sort of mixing and matching. I'm not playing anything that's really hard. I'm, I'm just pulling these little bits and pieces and I'm moving around through the chord progression based on what the band is doing. And what's going to happen is now, of course, I'm playing to a jam track, so obviously the band's not listening to me. But I guarantee you that if you start something like that, as it's about to come to the four chord, that tells the band in no uncertain terms, pick it up, <laughs> right? Pick it up and let's get going because I'm gonna play something cool now and I, I need a little bit more energy behind that, okay? So it, it really, it, it makes that conversation happen, okay? So I hope that kind of makes some sense. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please share it with some friends or anybody you know that might dig it. This is just something to keep in mind if you are just starting to improvise and to solo, you want to think about what I call that story form. You know, we're moving from low to high, and then at the end we tend to move back. Just the way, you know, classic novels throughout time, you know, they build and build and build and build, and then they have the resolution or the climax and then a resolution, right? So we all learned about that in English class at some point uh, <laughs> many years ago, right? But it happens in blues solos too, a lot. And if you keep it in mind, it works really, really well. So again, I hope you dug this video. Share it with some friends, and uh, I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.